everyone. We now know there is some uncertainty regarding the toxicity of manufactured nanoparticles. It will take some time before we get a clearer idea. So how can we innovate, Pierre, without taking any risks? Well, when a product is known to be dangerous, to avoid taking any risks, we make sure that we're not exposed. This is the precautionary principle. That's right. Even though nanoparticles are theoretically harmless, each manufactured nanoparticle is presumed to be dangerous and is kept confined to avoid any exposure. You're talking about danger and exposure. What does this really mean? A cliff is theoretically dangerous, isn't it, Kathleen? But if you don't go near it, if you don't go cliff climbing, you're not exposed. So there are no risks for you. All right. So when and how can we be exposed to nanoparticles? We already inhale millions of nanoparticles every time we breathe. Everything you breathe, you eat and you touch already contains natural nanoparticles or nanoparticles produced by combustion. Yes, but if I understand, Pierre, it's exposure to manufactured nanoparticles that we're mainly concerned with today, isn't it? Quite right. We have to prevent such exposure throughout the nanoparticles' life cycle. First, at the time the particles are manufactured, and then when nanomaterials are being produced. Next, during the phase when nanoproducts are used by consumer. And finally, at the end-of-life stage, with waste management and recycling. You've already explained to us that nanoparticles are the most difficult to confine when they're in the dry powder state. That's right, Kathleen. Liquids are being used more and more for production, but sometimes powders as well, which can be easily dispersed. They need to be monitored. Emissions and incidents must be avoided, and confinement barriers set up. Tell me, Pierre, are we able to measure manufactured nanoparticles in the air? Mm, that's a very good question, Kathleen. If the air is sufficiently pure, a cubic centimeter of air contains about 10,000 nanoparticles. The number fluctuates continually. This is ambient noise. To detect leakage, for example, a distinction must be made between manufactured nanoparticles escaping from a reactor and those that are part of the ambient noise. Talk about looking for a needle in a haystack. Yes, actually it is. Since the number of manufactured nanoparticles is low compared to the ambient noise, it's not easy to detect them. Hence, the idea of marking the ones that are potentially toxic in order to make them easier to monitor. That's a very good transition, Pierre. In the next episode, we'll review current research in the area of toxicology.